It's a good thing you showed up when you did. If it weren't for Derek, I wouldn't have made it at all. Derek? But I thought... And so did I. But turns out all he wants is to come back to the Guild. And killing carriers isn't the way to do it. Then who's behind all this? Well, Derek believes it's someone on the inside. I agree. Yeah, I find that hard to believe. Driscoll, you gotta come see this! Hi, me. I... I can't believe it. He had to be working for someone. He couldn't pull this off on his own. With personalities like Jack and Derek around, his nice guy routine kept him off everyone's radar. Ethan, it's Derek. I found Jack. He's dead. Now his killers are too, but I beat a confession from one of them before finishing him off. What did you learn? Jaime was working for Waltz. Waltz is behind this? Waltz? I didn't see that coming. Thanks, Derek. Gather Jack's things if you can. I'll be in touch. Roger that, Cochrane. So what is Waltz after? Destroying the carriers to disrupt the network? Waltz isn't a destroyer. He wants to control the network. He wants our archives all to himself. I've heard about the carrier's Bible. Is there more? A lot more. Maps, other books. Vast quantities of intel gathered over the years. Every little detail about the city and the surrounding areas as well. Waltz is no doubt trying to gather complete information about the city. Maybe about its citizens. He's looking for something and I need to know what. I need to see the archives. That's information reserved for only the highest ranks of the Carrier's Guild. However, you've more than proven yourself. Earned your place among our elite Carriers. Come on. Your time has come, Hotshot. Welcome to the top tier of the Carrier's Guild ranks. Not bad for a pilgrim. You are, officially, the elite of the elite. The best of the best of the very best of the Guild. Our secrets are now your secrets. To honor this occasion, I have something for you. Congratulations, Hotshot. And to think what you were when you joined. Some snotty-nosed little punk. And what you are now. A carrier. <laughs> Makes me proud. With your fearless dedication and service, you've earned the right to ask of the rest of us how we can serve you. You get one favor, so ask away. And make it good, hotshot. I asked that Derek be reinstated as a carrier. He saved my life and even as an outcast had this guild's back. He admits to his mistakes and I believe he'll work hard to make up for him. Well, if you say so, I'll believe you. We'll restore Derek immediately. Thank you. From now on, treat me like an open book. There is probably a great deal that you'd like to know. One answer's hot shot. Now's your chance to ask. Eden, hear 
the news. Uh, meet me in the canteen. If I really am to thank you, I want to do it in person. A question for you, Professor. Ask away. So, what's the real story on the Night Runners? Who were they? Heroes to most. Started out pretty simple. A group of soldiers who became infected during a mission. Now, usually, infection spelled the end of a military career. Too much risk, especially with so many night operations. However, around this time, the military created something called inhibitors. Not only did they prolong the time you could spend in the dark, but also greatly enhanced motor skills and other senses. The downside was the side effects of inhibitors. They kicked the crap out of most people if they didn't outright kill you. Given a choice, most soldiers took the risk to remain in active duty and to continue to make a difference in the battle. That's why people consider them heroes. Not just because they did so much to help so many, but because they joined the revolution on the people's behalf. They were the real deal, Aiden. That's quite a story. Can you tell me any more about Major Matt? Before the revolution, Jack Matt was an undistinguished military major. He made his name by refusing William's order to shoot civilians. He managed to get most rank-and-file soldiers to join him and side him with the people and help in their revolution succeed. He's considered by many as not just a hero, but the city's saviour. That was then. Now, I hear, he's more and more after personal gain than to help the citizens. That sounds like he's on a power trip. It's too bad. I'm looking for a girl named Mia. She'd be about my age now. <laughs> a little younger. Do you know anything about her? No, I'm afraid not. Anything else you can tell me about her? Yeah, she was one of Walter's experimental subjects. No, one of his victims. Fifteen years ago. There were more girls. The carriers know of one of them. It was hard to keep that one out of trouble. <laughs> Sounds like it could be her. Maybe. But I wouldn't get your hopes up. She goes by the name of Lawan. She hangs out with Frank, as far as I know. Oh, I see. Uh, thank you. So, what about this Rainer character? Character's right. He's responsible for bringing together all the trade unions necessary to get the wall built. This had him mixing with nearly everyone in the city, both the bigwigs and everyday people. He leveraged his role to make himself very, very rich. Which made him an unlikely revolutionary leader, but he became one nonetheless. He was ground zero for the rebellion. Although his true motivations have never quite been clear. He came out on top in any case and manages the supply chain for the peacekeepers. He's up there with Matt in influence. He's got exquisite taste, and in the course of his duties, manages to obtain all manner of rare artifacts his people come across. Well, he's become quite the collector. Hmm, sounds like a colorful individual. So who's this Colonel Williams? Oh, yes. Colonel Chris Williams, a.k.a. The Butcher. Ooh, how do you earn that nickname? If you hadn't just asked me, I'd say you don't want to know. But since you asked, Williams was the right-hand man of General Pratt, the nominal head of security for the city. I say nominal because it was an open secret that Williams was Pratt's puppet master. Pratt was a nepotism promotion and of no practical military use. Growing bold, Williams ordered a chemical strike on the city, while Pratt was stuck at the bottom of a whiskey bottle, unable to cope with the conflict, the responsibility of military command, and really, well, anything not whiskey-related. What happened next is common knowledge. Williams' attack triggered the revolution, 
With Pratt having abdicated all authority, Williams ordered the military to shoot civilians. Most of the soldiers refused his order, and the end of armed conflict came swiftly. But not before the Colonel and many of his supporters made the dam his personal stronghold. Shortly after that, lucky for him, he took in Waltz. Wow. The butcher indeed. Thanks for the information. So what really brought on the revolution? It had been building for a while. Under William's direction, the military was increasingly unconcerned with collateral damage or civilian fatalities. The chemical strike was the match that lit the bonfire. The military explanation for the chemical strike was to eliminate the infected in evacuated areas of the city. Fact is, most areas had not been evacuated. Crowds of survivors remained, huddled on roofs, sheltering in place. Citizens, but also undocumented refugees from all over Europe. There was no way to know who was healthy and who was infected. There was a massacre, and half the city's population was wiped out. Oh my God. It was a tragedy beyond comprehension. Was Williams that bloodthirsty and cruel? Was the military that disorganized that it didn't know its own evacuation plans? In the end, it doesn't really matter. Death and chaos enveloped the city, and those who survived had had enough. And so, as people have done throughout the ages, they rose up in revolution. <sighs> I hardly know what to say. Can you tell me anything about X-13? X-13? Interesting. Not quite, but listen to this. Back in the day, the military coded strategic locations around the city with an X and a number. This included sites like water towers, power stations. The higher the number, the more strategically important the location. But I've never heard of any location with a higher designation than X-9. So, what's strategically important about X-13? Have no idea. But I'll tell you, it's not a place for guys like you and me, lad. Hmm. I wonder what it means, then. Well, this has been quite an education. Thanks, Professor. No problem, kiddo. Wish more of my carriers were as curious as you. A question for you, Professor. 